Ah, I'm glad for the chance to talk once again. There is something I must explain. There is? What I said before, about wolves. It is because my grandmother was killed by wolves. Killed and devoured. Are you serious? Years ago, when my mother was a little girl, her mother, my grandmother, was on her way back from the village on her motor scooter, which was and still is the only means of transportation most Fredonians can afford. It was January, and the sun had just set, and it was dark, very cold. There were thousands of wolves in the countryside that winter. At night they would roam in huge, hungry packs. My grandmother was halfway home when she came upon a young man waving from the side of the road for her to stop. He too had been on a scooter, but his had broken down, and wolves were gathering all around him, preparing to attack. My grandmother, of course, stopped, and he leapt on behind her, and they took off down the road with the wolves, dozens of them, chasing after them. But with two people riding it, her scooter was slow, much too slow, and the wolves soon caught up with them. And when one of the wolves seized my grandmother's boot in its teeth and started to pull, instead of helping her, the man pushed her off the bike. It instantly gained speed and he got away. My grandmother, set upon by the wolves, did not. If she died, how do you know that's what happened? Tormented by guilt, the young man eventually confessed. He went to prison for several years, and the wolves were hunted year-round until the countryside was rid of them. But the damage was done. And so, I'm happy to talk to you about any subject except wolves. About them, I have nothing to say. Ever see Lou Talbot when you're out there training? The college student? Just yesterday, I had to slow down to avoid colliding with him. It ruined my whole session. That's all for now. Kavichi Naya. What you need? The Avalanche Patrol asked me to tell you that the explosives training session in Calgary has been postponed till next month. Well, hallelujah. I didn't really want to go anywhere until I finished off that wolf. Now I won't have to. I think you were right about the wolf not being normal. Of course I'm right. Dang, I just remembered. Patrol wants me to keep an eye on Skookum Ridge for the next couple of weeks. Here, there's the key to the snowmobile. Take it out to Skookum Ridge and see if there's been an avalanche. You want me to check it out? Seat seated so you don't have to worry about the cold. Make sure you call the patrol and give them a report when you're done. You can handle that, can't you? You bet. Good. Two more things. That Bill Kessler guy's getting bored being the only one around here doing any ice fishing. He wants competition. So if he says anything to you, just remember that Chantal wants you to keep the guests we got happy. Other thing is, a cold snap's on its way. You think it's cold now? Just wait. Gotta be real careful any time you're outside. So, we done here? I'd better get back upstairs. Good. Order up.
Order up. Order up. <laughs> Order up. Order up. Go outside in sub-zero temperatures? I don't think so. Shoot, I can't clean this room yet. I don't have... If I, I better wait until this do not disturb sign is gone. This shoot is for dirty laundry.
Order up. Order up. Order up. Order up. snowmobile not only crashed it i pretty much trashed it i didn't mean to but i guess i zigged when i should have zagged my insurance company's not gonna like this one bit for what it's worth i'm not exactly thrilled about it either well nancy can you guess what i'm about to say to you don't let it happen again you're fired yeah that was my second guess The sign's not buried, so I guess there hasn't been an avalanche.
I feel warmer already. Actually, I'm calling on behalf of Ollie Randall. He wanted me to tell you that there hasn't been any avalanche activity out at Skookum Ridge. I was wondering when we were going to hear from him. Thanks for the report. No problem. You check out Skookum Ridge? Yep, no avalanche. There's your snowmobile key. You make a report to the avalanche patrol? Sure did. What else do you want? I'll get out of your hair now. See you later. Been there, done that. Hi, Ned. It's Nancy. Hey, Nance. I couldn't tell it was you because you're not calling from your cell phone. No coverage out here. I'm in the middle of the Canadian Rockies, remember? Oh, I haven't forgotten. Everything okay? Well, as a matter of fact, just as I got here, the bunkhouse blew up. Yikes. So there was another act of sabotage? Looks that way. The sheriff found traces of a plastic explosive called C4 on some of the debris. So, if whoever blew up the bunkhouse is the same person who's been causing the accidents, you're looking for someone who knows something about explosives. Looks that way, yeah. Well, that's a pretty good lead. What else have you got? A lone wolf has been hanging out around the lodge lately. A wolf? That's kind of cool. No, what's cool is that it dug me out of an avalanche and saved my life. You're kidding me. Why would a wolf do that? I don't know. Yet. So, you've got a wolf hanging around that acts like Lassie. What else? Bad news. Chantal is insisting that if I need help, I get it from this police consultant she hired. A guy named Tino Balducci. Tino Balducci? Not that cop That's who... the one. How does Chantal know him? Someone introduced them and he charmed her into hiring him. And now I have to get all my hints from him. Well, I'm sure he'll be very helpful. Not as helpful as, say, I would have been, of course, but very helpful. Yanni Volkstaya, the cross-country skier? Someone threw a bomb at him while he was out on the slopes training. A bomb? You mean like a grenade or something? Whatever it was, it left a small crater. I saw it myself. Why would someone do that? From what I've read, Yanni is a pretty ruthless competitor. He's probably made a lot of enemies... In fact, he's convinced that his competitors are the ones who blew up the bunkhouse. He thinks they were trying to intimidate him. And what do you think? I think he could very well be right. Someone is definitely using explosives around here. And if Yanni's enemies are even half as determined as he says they are, it's quite possible that one of the people now at the lodge is working for them. But getting rid of someone by blowing him up? Isn't that a little excessive? Maybe they're trying to scare him into quitting. Well, either way, sounds to me like figuring out who's behind these bombings is the way to go. Are you familiar with a book by Jack London called The Call of the Wild? Sure. It's about a dog who winds up leading a pack of wolves. It's a classic. Why do you ask? Because I found a copy of it in Lou's room. Interesting. Maybe he's got something to do with the wolf that's been lurking around outside the lodge.
I was thinking the same thing. He does spend a lot of time outside by himself. He says he's snowshoeing, but maybe he's up to something else. Something that ties in with the wolf somehow. Or maybe the fact that he's reading that book is all just a big coincidence. Yeah, that could be too. As I recall, it was a pretty good book. Guadalupe Comillo says she's a bird watcher, but I'm not so sure. Why do you say that? For one thing, most birders will go on for hours about the birds they've seen or the birds they want to see, but not her. In fact, birds seem to be the last thing on her mind. And for another thing? The alarm clock from her room is missing. So, she's not a bird watcher because she sleeps in? I found a melted clock face in the debris left behind when the bunkhouse exploded. It could have been part of the timing device. You think it could have been Guadalupe's? You think she's the one who blew up the bunkhouse? Hey, women can blow things up too, you know. At the very least, they can help blow things up. Whatever you say. The guy who built Icicle Creek Lodge also built this weird concrete pyramid thing nearby that everyone calls Trapper Dan's Needle. What's it for? No one knows, but there was a piece of black nylon-type fabric sticking out of it. Like there's a door in it and someone had snagged their clothes on it on their way in. So you think there's a door, but you can't see one? Right. Well, just keep poking around. If something's got a front door, it usually has a back door, too. Ollie's on the avalanche patrol, which means he knows how to handle explosives. Could he be the mad bomber? He's got the temperament for it, I can guarantee you that. What I'm not sure about is why he'd be the mad bomber. Although he did mention that he wanted to get back into ranching for himself. What's stopping him? No property and no cash. Which reminds me, Chantal hasn't gotten around to giving him the raise she promised him. He seemed a tad bitter about that. Maybe he figures if he wreaks enough havoc around there, Chantal will shut down the lodge and sell it to him for next to nothing. Not only will he get property, he'll get revenge. You really think she'd sell the lodge to Ollie? Of course not, but if Ollie thinks that, he could easily be your guy. That's all I have to report. Call again soon, okay? I will. Bye.